Hey everybody, let's walk through the steps of recreating a logo in Adobe Illustrator. And for this demonstration, I've got an old fashioned Pepsi logo to play with. And uh, it's a good example of how you can use some basic shapes to make a more complex logo design. So to start out, we wanna analyze uh, what we're looking at and really is some basic rectangles, circles, a wave shape, and uh, you know the text in the middle, and we can kind of recreate this. And I've got the, the Pepsi logo here in the background so we can kind of trace over it and build the pieces as we go. The first step is to kind of work on the background pieces and then start to develop it from there. There's a way to do this in a precise manner, like to use guides and grids and try to really analyze it and get it exactly right. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now I'm kind of gonna I'm kind of gonna eyeball it as I go, uh, but just so you know, you could be more precise about this. And frankly, this is one of the things I had to do a lot professionally when working with customers is recreate their logos. Most of the time, customers lose their logos, and if you're working in printing or some other format, they're going to show up with a really horrible GIF or some terrible little, you know, scan of their logo, and you're going to be like, "What is this? I can't print this." And uh, the only option is to recreate it for them and charge them a little more money. So here you go. I'm gonna use a rectangle just to build the box for the Pepsi in the background. And one of the things that I, I find that, you know, students do in the beginning is they might actually use the hardest way to do something. And uh, you wanna avoid that you want to do what's simpler and easier. And if I was trying to do this, like say with a pen tool and draw it precisely and to get that circle and all that, it'd be really difficult to try to align things that way. It's much better to, to look at the underlying shapes and figure out, hey, I can just draw a few things, punch it out with a pathfinder and, and make it work. So let's start with a rectangle and just draw a box about the same size as the red and blue uh, sides of the Pepsi logo. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag that to the side, drag it away from the original logo so that I can uh, see it and sample the color. I'm gonna use my eyedropper and I'm just gonna click on the red to pick up the red from the, the scan. Now, I can't separate this just yet and add the blue uh, until I do a little editing. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna switch over to the ellipse tool and I'm gonna draw a circle about the size of this white opening on the logo. And again, I'm not doing this precisely, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So I'm gonna position my cursor in about where I think the middle of that circle is. And I'm gonna hold the option key and I'm gonna hold shift as I drag outward. And I'm gonna to try to eyeball the size of that circle and uh, get it about in the right spot. Did pretty good with that. Okay, now, if it's not quite right, you can come in with your selection tool and hold the shift key and size it and scale it and move it until it's about the right size we need for this. I'm gonna go ahead and just color it yellow just so it's you know obviously different. And as long as it's pretty dang close, we're good. So now I'm gonna drag that down and plop it over the top of my my rectangle shape I already drew. Now you may be already figuring out what we're gonna do next. We're gonna use the Shape Builder tool to cut out the middle. Um, I could use Pathfinder if I wanted, but this is a fairly simple combination. So I'm gonna use Shape Builder. But before I do that, I am gonna use an alignment. I am going to um, select the two shapes and then I'm gonna look for the center alignment uh, on my properties bar. So that way the two shapes are centered, evenly spaced, and then I'm gonna also do vertically centered, same thing. So now the shapes are perfectly in place. That means that it's gonna be a symmetrical cut when I cut these two pieces from one another. All right, so what I'm gonna do is now select both objects again, switch over to my Shape Builder tool, and using Shape Builder, I'm going to select Option or Alt on my keyboard and drag my cursor through the yellow piece that I wanna remove and boom, it cut it out. Now, uh, when those two objects are separated, 
I can click the right side by itself, use the eyedropper and pick up the blue. And now we're on our way. So here you have the centerpiece and you can see how we could do a similar procedure. Draw a circle, draw the white shape, cut it out, separate the pieces, color them as needed. Um, but there's that wave we're gonna deal with and I'm gonna show you how to, how to work on that too. Before we get to the wave though, we need to draw another circle. And again, I have to kind of eyeball where the center of that circle is. Hold shift so I get a perfect circle. Kind of drag it until it's in position. Not quite right. I'm gonna change its color so it's obvious. Switch to my selection tool and kind of scale it a little bit. Stretch it. Position it. Until it's about right. Looks like that's gonna be about the right size. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that down and position it. And I could again, if these were misaligned, I could select all three of those objects, use the vertical alignment, horizontal alignment. Oh, didn't wanna do that, sorry. Uh, just that vertical alignment, the center alignment pushed them all together. So I don't wanna do that, but that kind of moved it in the middle. Now let's deal with the wave. A wave is gonna require uh, a warp effect, but it's gonna start with a typical rectangle. Again, if you're trying to draw a complicated wave, you could come in here with your pen tool and draw that wave, but I'm trying to show you guys a simpler way to do it. So I need to draw a rectangle about the same height as those pieces, and then Make it a brighter color so it's more obvious. But I need to now distort that shape, that rectangular shape uh, in a symmetrical wave pattern. Now, where I can do that is under the effect menu. So I've got my rectangle selected. I'm going to the effect menu and I'm gonna use warp. And the one I wanna use is called flag. Now these are all different types of warp effects and we'll look at them in a second when we pull up the dialog box and you'll see what they do. Um, I just happen to know this one flag is gonna work for this. So I'm gonna click flag. And here you can see a little approximation of the warp effect. Now, if you don't see that, select preview so it shows you a little preview of what the uh, distortion is doing. Um, these warp effects are useful in, um, in these different kinds of interesting warps you might wanna make to text or shapes or other things. Uh, if you look at the little dialog box, you can see a little icon indicating what each one does. Like I said, flag is gonna give us the little wave. There is a wave, there's fish, rise, arc, arch, you know, all handy little distortions. To adjust wave, the way we want to get it to be a little more in line with the Pepsi logo, we have to adjust the bend. And right now that bend was a little extreme, so I need to lower it down to something that seems a little more in line with the amount of the wave. Um, here again, we're kind of eyeballing it. <clears throat> I happen to know that the wave is not quite horizontal. It's actually tilted a little bit. So we can't actually get it to line up in this warp feature. It's gonna be close, but you have to kind of imagine that we're still gonna to have to turn it when we're done with this and probably scale it a little bit. So I think somewhere around 25% of a bend is gonna do what we want. Um, maybe a little more, but I'm gonna go with 25% and then I'm gonna click okay. So again, like I said, we have to distort it a little more to get it to match. So we're gonna rotate it a little bit. And then kind of drag it down into position. Rotate it a little more. You can scale it a little bit if we have to to get it to line up. Yeah. Now we're in the ballpark. So we got that twisted, turned a little bit, tilted, and uh, now it's, it's gonna be just right. 
So I'm going to drag that down. And position it over the top of my uh, little Pepsi logo here. And I'm going to align it again to align the centers. There we go. So now it's a symmetrical alignment. Good. Um, here's the thing about an effect. Effects are actually what we call an appearance. All that means is that the effect, the warp, is not actually a permanent attribute. It looks warped, but under the hood, the shape is still a rectangle. It was just twisted to look like it's a wave. So for us to be able to make the, sh the shape interaction, to be able to punch the wave shape out of the lower shape, we have to convert this into a full-blown shape and uh, remove the appearance or the effect. Um, that is done under the object menu and it's called expand appearance. Again, these warp effects are called appearances and that's a key word that'll kind of pop up in other areas inside Illustrator is these appearances. So anytime you use one of these effects, anything from the effect menu, they call it an appearance. So if I'm going to expand the appearance, the appearance, what that means is that I'm going to convert that look into an actual shape. And so you'll see it when I click expand appearance. And if I looked in the outline view, you'd see now that shape has fully been distorted. It's an actual twisted shape now. Okay, so to get these to interact, I'm gonna carefully select the pink circle and the yellow band. And then I'm going to use the shape builder tool on them. And I need to remove the yellow. So I need to hold option on my keyboard and just carefully drag through the yellow pieces, avoiding contact with the pink shape. And now I've got my, my wave pattern cut out of the circle. So here I can click on a shape, use my eyedropper, select the top color, use the eyedropper, select the bottom color. Now what's left? What's left is just the word Pepsi. And it looks like a pretty standard Helvetica, Arial, bold font. Um, I honestly haven't researched what it was. I'm pretty sure it was probably Helvetica. Let's try that. I'll just put in Pepsi, type it out, scale it up. Uh, scale it to about the right height. Should probably try a brighter color so it's more obvious what I'm doing. And I'm gonna look for Helvetia. Um, let's look for Helvetica and just Helvetica bold. How about Helvetica black? Do I have that? Just like me to be prepared with a wrong font. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do what everybody else does. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use Arial. Arial black. That's pretty darn close. Um, my font is stretched, so I'm going to adjust the, uh, the size a little bit. Look at that, pretty dang close. Just bump up the numbers a little bit, get it on mine, the Arial at about 102 is about the right size. And I just need to use the, uh, the kerning feature to kind of dial that back in a little bit. Looks like about negative 75, pretty darn close. Pretty darn close, Pepsi. And there it is, even with a little bit of a, 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 a tricky font, we uh, stuck with Arial, got our shapes done, drew up the Pepsi logo with those basic shapes. So hopefully that taught you a few things about using shape combinations, using Shape Builder, using warp effects, and things necessary to uh, convert, twist, and recreate the logo you want to make. All right, so thanks for watching. See you next time, guys.